Hi folks, back to welcome to um serverless crack. We're back we're back on again. Um after the short break, but we're good to go again. Um so I figured we'd maybe uh we'd do something slightly different for this episode. Um I, I think we should talk about the serverless develop uh developer relation or the DA team at AWS. Um I think it's probably a good thing to talk about and just kind of reflect on. Um but probably first, we're just out of Service Days Belfast. We just kept us busy for a while. Yeah. Any reflections on the event? Yeah, geez. I well, first and foremost, Dave, yeah, congratulations to yourself and you know the team that organized it. I thought it was really well organized. The the Titanic theme or the Titanic kind of you know hotel and you know that whole area. You know, in terms of like the engineering history around. Belfast and things as well. It was, it was a really good atmosphere um, and it was packed out. And I, I think the big thing I took away from it is it seems to be that there's way more adoption and the, the level of the talks and the level of you know the interactions and the level of the experience of the people there seemed to be very high, you know, so it was really, really good, really engaging. And like, I know I'm not just saying it for because we were there and you know, it was local, or whatever, but I literally came away with a book of stuff like my, my notebook and there's about five or six things that, you know, I, I genuinely wanted to take back and, and, you know, look into. So I thought, I thought it was really, really good. The quality of the speakers was very, very high, really, really good too. So really good event. I echo all that. I think it was very select, very, very great, great venue. Um, but there was a great community aspect, lots of people, lots of conversations, lots of side conversations. Um, yeah. From everything from beginner all the way up to you know, really seasoned experts, we're having really good, meaningful conversations, not just with the talk, but also on the side. I think the venue helped with that as well. Just great there. Really, really, really good. Really, really impactful. And I think uh, like anyone who was there got a lot out of it. And there was a lot of lot of buzz and a lot of energy. So it was um yeah, very, very successful day. So well done. Thank you both. I, I didn't ask you for a load of praise now, so probably should have rephrased my question better. Um, no, I was like, I wasn't expecting that. But um, for anybody, the serverlessdaysbelfast.com has all the details and content, and we'll be pushing out the videos soon enough. But I really enjoyed the event. It was like the theme was building beyond boundaries. I wanted to kind of raise the bar a bit and using the whole like the shipyard and the Titanic that the Titanic was built in Belfast has been built, had been like 120 years ago. I think something like something like fifteen hundred ships, like ocean liners, have been built there. So it's it's it was the mecca of engineering hundred years ago. So it was just nice. I thought to bring that back around to with what we do, and uh, people certainly got inspired. And hearing all the stories about what happened there then versus what we do now, like was 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 pretty cool. Like so, it was nice nice. Um, it's a community event as well, so it's good to just bring everyone together. Of the chat, and I mean, probably related to our next topic. Um, it's very hard to measure that. You know, if you get over two hundred people or three hundred people in a room, they're all talking, learning, enjoying themselves, getting a bit of a spring to their step. It's very hard to put a a dollar amount as they go back into their teams. I mean, you could pretty much say it's it's what like fifty quid a ticket. It's a day off work. I mean, that's not that expensive. But the, what you'll get from that as an engineer go back to your office is off the scale. You know. So I think there's a good point there around there are very little barriers to adoption of the thing that you were hearing or, or, or learning about on the day. And I think serverless is very important in this aspect is that, you know, you can hear about a company adopting step functions, for example, you can take that away and you can try it yourself right, that day. Uh, there's no you know, big licensing or any sort of big installation or any sort of you know, huge outlay of expense to I wonder if that'll work in my context. I wonder if that'll work in my company or for the problem I'm trying to solve. So I think the, the feedback loop from you know, hearing the content and hearing the tough speakers and hearing these great ideas and you actually applying them to your ecosystem, your context, your company is really tight. So the, like you say, it's hard to measure sometimes the impact that you know those little nuggets of wisdom have on you know junior people or even well-seasoned people. You know, the the impact there is, is is huge, right? They'll they'll be taking lots of stuff when applying it to their to their own uh, business, and you you may not ever hear how successful that was, but it was it was mm -hmm. inspired by some of the things that some of the speakers were talking about. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, 
I would be in my bonnet about people saying, oh, they're really brilliant engineers. Really brilliant engineers are curious and learn from other people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you put a brilliant engineer in a, in, a, in, a, in a silo and say, build that yourself, they'll probably mess it up. You know, so it's 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 you've got a curiosity to look outside your space and, and get influenced and inspired by others. That's how it works. Yeah, I think it was, the, it was probably one of the first events I've been at. No, sorry, about the first events is probably one event that I've been to in, in a long time where you're coming away, but you see you're seeing the next iteration of something that come through. You know, like and and there's some nice talks are in the front end kind of approaches and serverless, mm -hmm. and then there was whole Jeremy's concept in terms of what he's doing at Ant. You know, like you're kind of looking at that kind of okay, that's that's different. You know, that's that that's certainly a different way of thinking. So how do you to your point, how do you apply that? You know, how do you look at yeah. things slightly that's, different, take a different angle? Yeah. I mean, I'd love to I don't want to talk about all speakers because we were here all day, like, but I thought Jeremy Daly specifically did a brilliant job in the keynote and what he's doing at Antdev is is really inspiring, you know. So I, yeah. I hope that really grows and grows and grows, like, but it's he's he's really he's lifting the bar, not just one notch, many notches. So it's great to see that, but it's probably a nice, a nice. I mean, for me, I actually can't stand the phrase serverless because uh, it, 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 it doesn't really communicate what we're doing either at the event and serverless days, and what we do, and even the next topic of the AWS serverless DA team. So it's the developer advocacy team, and and just for a bit of bit of context, there's there's been a couple of things out in Twitter this past couple of weeks about. Some of the guys and the and and gals of the developer uh, service DA team that are kind of either changing teams or whatever don't really want to get into the internals of AWS like, but um, I wanted to just tribute that that's such a strong team. It was led by a guy called James Beswick, and before that, a guy founded by a guy called Chris Mons. And um, I would say over the last ten years, we've been, or maybe I think, I think they've been around about maybe eight years, we've been just lapping up their content on Twitter, at conferences, and LinkedIn for a long time. I'd say that's probably my number one resource, the people on that team for where I basically learn all the stuff that, that we do. So it's, um, I thought it'd be interesting just maybe um, just talk about that team for a wee bit and, and the massive impact they've had on, on what we do anyway. It's been huge impact and, and huge enablers for everything we've all done in our careers um, and all the sort of the... Uh, the barriers that we were trying to, to push against, a lot of their content, a lot of the work that they did helped us and gave us ammunition for you know, challenging some of the status quo and some of the, the context that we were dealing with at, at that time. So the more external validation of our approach was coming from the development advocacy team, you know, the blogs, the, the patterns, the, the examples, the workshops, the tutorials, or even just you know, on, the, on the calls. We got some of them on the calls and talked about some of the problems we were having huge amounts of enablement, huge amounts of um, just empowering us to, to try these things and removing any of those barriers or any of the friction we had. So, yeah, they, they were huge enablers and um, yeah. kudos to them all. And I, I, I don't really know how to describe this properly, but, I mean, it's, it's, it's not kind of personal, but when you get a product guy on the phone and you maybe say, we're trying to do this thing with step functions, they'll tell you what step function does. When you get the sales guys on the phone, they'll try and sell you more stuff. When you get one of the DAs on the phone, you'll say, we're trying to do this in step function. They'll say, no, that's crazy. Don't be using that. Use EventBridge or use something else or use something that's not even on AWS. They just give you an honest answer based on their experience and what they see. So it was great to hear that unbiased opinion. They don't have any product interest. They're not trying to sell you something. It's just someone who's in the space, talks to lots of people, and they're good engineers. So it was, I found it super um, helpful and validating just to hear their opinions on things. And you, there's lots of times you may be thinking something and you think, oh, right, that's interesting what he said. Why did he say that? And then you look and go, oh, we were completely wrong about that, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, I, I think without the without that team, without those DAs, I mean, like Amazon's such a big company and and you, you kind of look at the multitude of services that are available to say, you know, teams like us to leverage and what we do in day to day. And they're changing all the time. And a lot of stuff would go through and get missed. You know, like so if you're just looking through a big list of change requests or whatever on a on a monthly or or whatever kind of basis, you can't really appreciate what's what's changed or or what's available. These guys do such a good job of highlighting new things that come out, but create blogs around it create working examples around it and show you how these things are kind of progressing, which then makes it way more consumable and allows us to kind of build, you know, almost, they're almost kind of the, the engine that kind of builds the movement 
and yeah. you know around it and and shows what others are doing with certain things and you know and, and kind of fleshes all that out like look at all the podcasts the guys are doing and the, the amount of content they do produce but it's just way more consumable and way more leverageable to us mm. in terms of what we've got to do to your point Dave you don't really want to read it if you're reading this back you're not really appreciating you're not going through all the things it could be used for but when you see how someone actually does leverage it does then get you thinking oh that's interesting I never thought like that so again they're they've they've kind of breathed life into a lot of what's mm -hmm. going on in the serverless side of things in that serverless movement and they're continuing to do it you know yeah. I really like um, Julian's talk say at serverless days there last week was brilliant in terms of you know just breathing life into sort of concepts that have been around for a long time in relation to flow control and, and stuff like that and I think shit be really good i've never that notation is really nice can we design this stuff in the abstract before we even consider services yeah. you know, but that's that's the type of like thing you don't get just through you know kind of reading the, the spec it's kind of you need these people who um can can bring it to life and i think that's that's what they do you know and um, and hopefully that's what they continue to do yeah. you know i think yeah, like i've got a lot of what we have been sort of pushing for is don't do undifferentiated heavy lifting but for us trying to do modernization or migration or enablement work within our own organizations, a lot of that undifferentiated heavy lifting, we were able to point towards serverless land, to the DA team, to the patterns and the examples and the workshops and the tutorials that they already provided so that we didn't have to create that content ourselves. We didn't have to create those courses or those tutorials or those workshops or those blog posts. We were able to build on top of what they already put in place, right? So we were standing on the shoulders of the giants here, right? So that whenever we were trying to transform you know, a, a large enterprise, we were able to you know, tailor some of the content they had, tailor mm -hmm. to that internal context, and then move ourselves up the value chain, right? So yeah. we were basically standing on top of the work that they had enabled us you know, to do so. Yeah. And like, and let's, and let's be very specific. I mean, you think of the whole transformation that we drove with Liberty Mutual. I mean, a lot of that was based on the content that these people were pushing out, you know, because that was your kind of validation that we weren't just making stuff up. I mean, you go through the team. I mean, Chris Mullins formed the team. I think it was 2015-16, around that kind of time. Um, and you just, you got to a point where you just say, what's, what's he tweeting about? What's he talking about? Like, what articles is he writing? And that was a pretty good steer. And then as the team grew, I mean, James Beswick was in there. I mean, lots of really solid blog posts, lots of really good content. Lots of good conferences. We think of the different kind of um, uh, events that, that they were running. You had um, Julian Wood. I think Julian Wood came over on, the, I think he came over on the first Service Days Belfast in 2020. I remember asking him to do a talk in Liberty, which was brilliant. I remember saying to him, can you explain to all the managers what serverless is in plain English? And he was like, okay. And he just he just sat and just explained. It was brilliant. It was such, such a good, good talk. And he's been, I mean, he's been absolutely acing um, uh, reInvent. He, he regularly gets like the most, the, the, the best serverless talk. I was with him one time, a bunch of people recognized him in the streets, <laughs> started taking photographs of him. Like, so I mean, he, he's like a rock star. Eric Johnson goes without saying, has been absolutely unbelievable. So many events he's been driving, such a good speaker. With Ben Smith, who created the whole um, Service Espresso, who's quietly creating these brilliant step function and event bridge implementations. David Borney with all the EDA stuff. I mean, all the EDA visualizations is incredible. And then Marcia with all the YouTube channels she's got. So it's such a wealth of information. It's, I mean, the thing I like now that they've probably done over the past, maybe probably two years, my time frames are all messed up, but um, the serverless land site, yep. it's now my go-to whenever someone starts and they say, well, uh, can you tell us what your technical, just say, read that site. <laughs> so go read that site. Here's a few articles, but just consume that entire site. And then we'll talk because that's that's our strategy. That's it. We, we almost had our own uh, internal serverless land where we have a, a mind map of this and a, do a, a blog on that and a, and a pattern for this and a, do all the different EIP sort of patterns all scattered around and then serverless land is brought it all together. So instead yeah. of us having our own custom built you know, the resource, we were able to just point people to serverless land. It was, it was fantastic, right? We can, we can delete our own like and just point to that. It's brilliant. And then, and even way back at the start, a lot of the slides that Chris Mons and Co were producing, we were taking those slides and then putting them into our internal decks that help us drive the messaging or help us drive some of the wow. messaging and all the sort of things that helped us 
create a, an environment where this messaging would look really slick. We were able to leverage all the stuff they were producing. Was great. I think Ferris Framework knows the time. I was inspired by them. We'd be inspired by them. You just actually stole them. <laughs> yeah. with, with, with contribution, right? <laughs> yeah, with contribution. But um, no, I mean, so I think it's 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 I've enjoyed all the 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 reflection and celebration of what those what what that and there I know there's a few other people in the team, but I'm just talking about the people who I personally know and have have worked with and talked to. Um, I know they're all moving to different areas, and like there's still a strong um developer advocate movement within AWS. Like so, they'll keep they'll keep saying that the conversation will keep going. Like, but to me again, it's serverless is evolving again. You can kind of see it. And there'll always be that need, I think, for advocacy. The thing I think is hard about developer advocacy or DevRel, it's really hard to say, like, what's the measure of success? It can't be like articles written or comp or you know talks done. It's really hard to measure the impact. That's always going to be hard. That's hard for every company, you know. But I'm glad companies do invest in develop DevRel because it's it's the way we learn about things, you know. And I the the the. Service data team in particular, they've probably had hundreds of millions, maybe even in the billions worth of, of impact. But because that type of enablement is so hard to measure, they'll probably never know. Right. It's yeah. like, you know, how many times has that pattern been leveraged in massive companies? How many times has that blog post inspired Fortune 100 companies to build in a serverless way? How many times has you know those slides helped convince some C suite that you know this is the way to go? It's very hard to get tangible, quantifiable metrics on, on that, but from all of our experience and from sort of from a, a lot of anecdotal sort of um, metrics, it's been a huge impact. A huge amount of outcomes have been driven from the work that they've done. So yeah, and you know what it's like for engineers. I know what I was like. I mean, we're fairly tuned in now. I think we're we're all old. When I was younger, I mean, you'd be just like, yeah, I seen some talk with some guy with a ponytail, and he said this thing that's really interesting. Who was his name? Can't remember, but he was really good. I remember the thing he said. There'll be thousands of people like that who just remember seeing a bit of a talk or a bit of a a, a, a live stream and just think yeah uh, yeah i heard something interesting and that set you off on a path really hard to track but um yeah no, i think it's just worth I'm glad we kind of celebrate the brilliant work they've done because if they helped us a huge amount put it that way yeah and the other thing i'd say too is like you could always be up fairly honest like um i remember one of the things there last week we were having a conversation with julian just around say you know, open telemetry and AWS's position around it. And you can be sure that, you know, like we're, we're taking firm opinions and we were opinionated from our perspective and we're, our, us as engineers, architects, developers, we have opinions on this, but we give it to them. And, but you can be rest assured they're feeding that back in to, to AWS as well. You yeah. know, like, so they're, they're taking our thoughts and our opinions and helping shape what's going on in terms of the roadmap and through, you know, the, the progress on the, on, on the cloud yeah. side of things. So they're, they're, the, I, I would suspect they're they're highly kind of you know important with that regard too you know like they they are they can take you know fairly critical feedback too and deal with it and take it and run with it i'm kind of hoping that that continues on with the evolution of the sort of the developer advocacy and, and aws is that that feedback loop and shaping of product direction is still strong and still yeah. uh, still still front of mind yeah yeah for sure like yeah, and there's always a thing as well, like those guys, I mean, they're always super, super professional, super polite. I've had so many conversations where you maybe ask for something and they're like, I'm not sure about that. And they say, well, why don't you contact the product team and explain to them the thing you're trying to do? Because I think though they would love a customer testimonial saying, we would like to do this thing, you know, or, or a feature request or something. So they're always kind of pointing you or can you connect me with a name in that team? They go, yep, here's somebody's email address, drop them a note. So we've done that loads of times. Um. Cool. Well, that's, I mean, that, that was worth it. I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to the, the, the content, the the team, the, the, the individuals keep putting out whatever their, their new teams, I know they're all moving about, so I don't want to, I don't want to speak to where they're all going because I don't know, <laughs> but um, looking forward to continuing following and different um, uh, channels and stuff. So probably, we could probably close off with the future of serverless. I think certainly with the, the, the dialogue, the things people are talking about, even with serverless days Belfast, you certainly sense a, a shift and what we're doing, we've been talking a lot about event-driven architecture and EDA recently. I, I think there is a, an evolution, and you can see some very cool vendors out there, like of Vercel and, and Memento, doing really interesting, Cloudflare, doing super interesting stuff. So mm. it's an interesting time. It's definitely, I, I find myself repeating, like, service is not just lambdas, it's not just functions, you know. 
like the you know do you have situational awareness do you know the value chain that you're trying to bring to bear here and what is the best technology or the best solution to to, to deliver that that value chain right and just for us a lot of it was serverless uh, for a long time but as things evolve there are new capabilities new components that you can plug in there that you know maybe a SaaS offering right and maybe not you know the you know use lambda or, or use your step function maybe there's a SaaS offering that you can you can leverage right so i think that's a that's a good healthy uh, conversation and I think we've been sort of using the word sort of modern cloud or modern modern sort of cloud solutions or modern applications for a while as well. So they can say it's you know, the terminology will evolve. I think we're doing. Yeah. yeah, there's definitely a higher level of abstraction beginning to emerge that's just encompassing the whole service thing. You know, so there's less about it and more about the you know the, the higher order kind yeah. of emergent. And God knows what name it'll end up with. I'm not going to try and name it, but somebody will name it and it'll be we'll all hate that equal as much as serverless. So Next gen. Yeah. next gen, next gen, next <laughs> gen. Yeah. As long as you don't call it helper. Um, yeah. Cool. Well, that's the crack. Good conversation. I think it was good to good to um, 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 reflect on the service DA team. It's it's um, one of my favorite teams for a long time. So um, fair play to them. A massive thank you to all the teams, the extended team for all the work. Um, that come from a lot of engineers, I'm sure. So um. Uh, so give us a look up on uh, the service Give us a like or a follow on Twitter or YouTube. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.